March 1976, March 29, 1976, uh, EF4, that is Enhanced Fujita Scale, that is measures the wind speed and by the amount of destruction. An EF4 hit my hometown of Canton, Mississippi. It did incredible damage to the historic Canton Square. My grandmother's house, where I was born and raised, is about a five-minute walk from there. I was not home at the time. I was at Canton Academy. I was in the elementary. I was six years old. And I remember it being a stormy day. In fact, my fascination with thunderstorms, and in particular, tornado thunderstorms at that, but stems from this date. And I remember that we were in the hall. They pretty much had a lockdown and, and had canceled classes. We're in the hall, duck and cover. Uh, you probably know the drill, no pun intended. And so, anyway, my mom shows up from work. And she is white as a sheet, but she has this very intense look. And, of course, she got, told me to get my uh, bags and go. And I grabbed my book bag that I had, and I got in the car, and we sped to the house. Now, my mom never sped in the car with me in it, but she did that day. And as we were going to her house, which was not too far from the school, I see this huge black cloud uh, with uh, pink, dirty gray, with a little hint of orange and purple thrown in for good measure. I'm not thinking anything of it other than this thunderstorm. Get to the house. My mom very hurriedly makes uh, me, I think, some Kool-Aid and some cookies. And I'm watching, while she had the TV on, I'm watching out the plate glass window, basically the deluge uh, that is coming and all this water everywhere. And I'm busting the gut to get out in it. My mom's like, no, you are not going anywhere. And then the lights went out. And then she very nervously said, let's go to get in the hall. And like that, it was over till later, I guess about 30 minutes to an hour later, her husband of the time came in and said Canton had been blown away. An EF4 tornado. There were three killed, two in a mobile home, one in a service building, 177 injured, $25 million worth of damage. And yet my grandmother's house, five minutes away, very little, very little structural damage. In fact, we all kind of stayed there for the next night or two as more storms came through because they had the National Guard out and my grandfather didn't want the house to get looted. But then from there in my time, I have seen some storms. I have been in some storms. In fact, some people storm chase for the fun of it. Our next picture uh, is actually very cool, which is, of course, I'm not sure the size, but it's sufficient enough to relocate you, your house, and your vehicle if you drive into it. Uh, some people storm chase because they're in for the science. They try to help people, and that's awesome. Some people uh, chase because they want to have pictures, and I can relate and understand. Some people are in for the thrill, and I have to admit, uh, it is quite an adrenaline rush. Been there, done that. Uh, I don't recommend you do that, so I'm not saying, uh, guys, get in your vehicles Friday and it's supposed to be stormy and hit the roads. In fact, if you're going to storm chase, here's some uh, things you need to be aware of. You just don't dabble in storm chasing and expect to be okay. If at, in fact, if you're going to storm chase, you need to know a little bit about thunderstorms and how they form. You need to understand the types of tornadoes you may encounter from an EF0, which is your basic garden variety spin-up, sufficient to tear a roof off or maybe turn your truck over, but other than that, it's not, uh, it's not the monster. Or the EF5, or, which is, in essence, the finger of God. If you see a two-and-a-half-mile wide a tornado on the ground, huge wedge with 300 plus mile per hour winds and it's coming at you, I would suggest pray, pray hard uh, because it's not going to end well. At least you won't be in Kansas anymore. However, you know, some of you will get that in a minute. But with that said, you might want to have some computer equipment that allows you to track the storms so that you know the path of them so that first you know where you need to be if you're going to try to chase these things, take pictures, try to help people. You want to carry some emergency cash. You want to carry a first aid kit because you don't know what you're going to run into. And if you see somebody lying on the floor, on the ground, who's hurt, you, you don't, oh, that's so bad. I want to go chase that. No, you stop and you help. Uh, that's what a good neighbor does. And then... And then you want to have some safe driving skills so that you don't kill yourself or kill somebody else. Oh, and last but not least, guys, if you're going to storm chase, which I highly recommend that you don't, but if you do, all right, um, and everything, 
you want to you want to know how not to get too close to a tornado. You don't want to get into the kill zone. You don't want to drive into the path. Sometimes, oh, they're going this way, and then they can be a sidewinder and come back on you, and then you are in a world of hurt. Some storm chasers in 2013 got killed. They were veterans, not like military people. Well, maybe they were, but um, they were seasoned. They were experienced professional storm chasers, I think, with the Weather Channel, or at least professional storm chasers like most of these guys are. And they were rolled and killed because they got into the zone even though they, they knew what to do, but it was unpredictable. Well, you know, spiritual... Oh, by the way, before we get into that, I, rest, I try to restrict my storm chasing to, you know, YouTube because 4K images, uh, the coverage is excellent. All right? However, I've, been, I've seen a thing or two, so I know a thing or two. Been there, done that, got the, uh, got, got the life scared out of me a few times. However, spiritual warfare is like that, too. You see, last time we were here, we talked about a call to suit up, you know, in the armor. Well, tonight, I want to briefly talk to you about a cause or a reason to suit up. You don't just dabble with spiritual warfare. You don't play around with it. You have to understand it and take it seriously. In the Bible, if you have your Bibles, turn with me, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So I would have you note first part of our message tonight. We're going to talk about a spiritual storm warning. One that's all inclusive. Uh, this storm is not just coming, spiritual warfare as a spiritual storm, it's already here. All of us are even now already affected by it. Uh, none of us are immune. None of us are exempt. In fact, I would dare say that if you are a born-again believer, whether you're children, whether you are teenagers, and certainly as the adults and those of you watching by home, if you're a born-again Christian, then you're already in the path of the oncoming storm. You're already caught up at ground zero. And that's why you and I must suit up in the whole armor of God so that we ride out the storm, not only endure it, but we come out the other side, uh, and we come out the other side successfully. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 113, He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of His beloved Son. But a spiritual storm warning can also be what I call insidious. That is, it can get you before you realize it because not every storm is a raging uh, hurricane or a raging F5. In fact, sometimes they can start small. S small things that seem benign can blow up fast and intense all around you. If that's true in the storm-chasing world, that's certainly true in the spiritual realm. I remember, I think it was the summer of 2006, it may have been 07, when in Benton, we had a typical summer afternoon thunderstorm. Garden variety, it you know gets dark a little bit, thunder, lightning, and then it started hailing, which was unusual, and the rain stopped. But it was pea-sized hell, so I'd go outside and check it out. I know you're supposed to stay inside, but I'm not wired right, so I went outside and because I enjoy that stuff. And so I go outside, and I'm looking on one side of the cow pasture, and it's starting to be daylight. On the other side, it's this gray-green cloud. My daughter's out there. My wife comes out there. We're looking, and I'm hearing this awful roar, just like when the train comes through when I'm preaching, at the, and it's usually the most inopportune time when that train comes through. I love a train, but not when I'm preaching. But it was roaring. And I looked, and I didn't see the funnel, but I saw the wall cloud on the other side of the tree line as it was heading away. We had a spin-up tornado, probably an F0 or F1, but most likely an F0. But you could hear the power in that thing. But it went from little to nothing when the storm hit to becoming severe just like that. And that can happen in our spiritual experience as well. 
That's why you need to suit up so that you can stand up. But I also want to talk to you about what I call a spiritual storm watch. You see, a warning is that the storm is on top of you and it's hitting right now. But a watch is when conditions are favorable. Now, if you're a storm chaser, that means that's good news for you because that allows you to be able to track where they may be heading and therefore you can drive into the area so that you can chase it uh, and be able to do what you need to do as an experienced uh, storm chaser, okay? Or, if you are like everybody else, it gives you a heads up so that you can get your stuff prepared and a flashlight, batteries, whatever, phone, and make sure it's charged. And then, of course, get to your safe room if you have one or into an interior room of the house. I'm doing an infomercial here. Well, spiritually, there's a storm watch as well. Conditions are always favorable for things to develop and without warning starting small and go, going, going big, so to speak. That's why you and I are to be alert. We don't need to wait till the last minute to put on the armor. When the sky is green and you see a wall cloud as it's coming towards you, as I sat in my mom's kitchen at the same house, well, almost the same house that, while I was a senior in high school, and I was talking to my stepdad, and we were talking about the 1976 tornado that ripped through uh, downtown Canton. And I'm looking, I said, what, what, is it, what did it look like? Because my stepdad was in the middle of it where his welding shop was at the time. Uh, he got to see it up close and personal as the thing came over. And he said, well, it looks like the thing that's out there. I looked out the back door, and sure enough, I saw not just the wall cloud. I saw the bowl shape, and I saw the rotation. I said, it's here. Well, he and I decided we weren't going to try to get into the small closet. It was an interior room, but it wasn't big enough for him, let alone me and him. So we made the decision to get in my pickup truck, and we sped to where my mother works, or worked at the time, which was the hospital where she was one of the administrators. Well, you know, that's not the time to decide when you're going to take uh, precaution. You need to be prepared in advance. That's why we have to be alert, making sure we're suited up already. So we stay prayed up, read up, and living up in terms of Scripture in the Lord. Because a watch can become a warning very quickly. And a watch means that you can be armed. In other words, knowledge is power. Knowledge arms you so that you don't have to face one of these things unprepared. Well, you don't have to face a spiritual storm unprepared as well. In the language of the New Testament, Paul says it's a wrestling match. You know, uh, when two people grapple with each other, one throws the other to the ground and holds them down. Well, you know, that's what's going on spiritually. And I liken it to a storm which can overwhelm you. So you have to be armed. That, that battle, that oncoming storm, affects a bunch of areas very quickly as we close. The political arena. There are laws and rules being written and voted on that are not Christian values. They're not even common decency. And that is a spiritual warfare situation. Guess what? You need to be suited up so you can stand up because it's in the path of the storm. The educational arena, what you're taught, how you taught, that's in the path of the storm. Suit up so that you can stand up. Financial arena, how you spend your money, how you make your money, and what you get with it, that's in the path of the storm. Suit up so that you can stand up. The cultural arena, what you do for entertainment, how you uh, enjoy recreation and, and where you go and, and what you do, that's in the path of the storm. Suit up so that you can stand up. And then last but not least, the religious arena. What you believe, how and why you believe it, that's in the path of the storm. You better be suited up so that you can stand up. Storm chasing is not for the average person. Spiritual warfare is not for just the average Christian. That means that we don't just dabble and play with it. Uh, we have to take it seriously. And taking it seriously means, oh, Lord, help us to be prepared. Help us to be alert. Help us to be aware. And, Lord God, help us to put on that whole armor so that when the spiritual watch becomes a spiritual storm warning, then we are ready for the storm and we can ride it out and be successful on the other side. By his grace, go with God.